Rangi Review for the PlayStation Fear. Let's begin! First up, let's take a look at the gameplay. Rangi is a puzzle game where you must connect coloured lines to power up doors. To do this you must manipulate many different tiles found around each location. Grabbing and moving tiles can be a bit finicky on certain puzzles, when your aiming has to be very precise. Luckily when a tile is nearly in the correct place, it does snap into position and a sound is heard. To move around the world you teleport, but you can only teleport to certain locations. I do think teleportation was a better choice for this game, as it allows quicker movement through each location, which is great considering you will have to keep checking to see if everything lines up, and it also allows the developers to put you in the best position in the world to really examine each puzzle's layout. The game doesn't have smooth turning though, which is a bit of a shame. The puzzle starts off incredibly easy, and gradually get quite hard. The game does a brilliant job at getting you used to the new mechanics, by explaining each one in text form, and also by easing them into the level layouts themselves. Some levels require you to rotate slabs with lines on, and others have you flipping switches with platforms platforms that have lines on. Some doors require you to mix two coloured lines together to create a new colour. There is quite a bit of variety here when it comes to interacting with the world's puzzles. There are also dangers you must dodge in some of the levels, such as characters and saws. You really will want to take your time and miss these, as if you get hit by one, it's game over and you have to start from the beginning of the level again, which can be quite annoying in the later levels as the puzzles are more lengthy. Also changing up the gameplay are levels without puzzles where you must simply teleport your way through. Some of these have no dangers, and others do. The ones that do have dangers require quick teleportation. The angle turning is a bit slow, so they really demand many retries as you get used to each one's teleportation location. Later on in the game, you must solve many puzzles located in many different rooms, instead of one. It may seem a bit confusing at first, but after you scout out each area, the line layouts do become clear. The gradual difficulty here is done incredibly well for a puzzle game. The game's collectibles come in the form of artefacts that you simply grab like a tile to pick up. Some are easy to spot, but others are quite hard. As long as you keep a lookout for every teleportation spot, you shouldn't have too much of a problem finding them all. Now let's take a look at how immersive this game is. The game is quite sharp and the backgrounds don't look too blurry, thanks to its cell shaded graphics. The whole game does have a simplistic style, but each location does feel quite different from one another, thanks to the colours seen in each area. The buildings you explore are quite big compared to you. The sense of scale is especially made apparent when you go for a ride on a character's arm. You do feel incredibly tiny in the world. Particle effects emit from your staff and also on the tip of a line when it travels along a wall. These may only be small details, but it does make the world a bit more magical. The music is of a tribal nature and obviously does suit the world and setting. I did find it to get a bit repetitive towards the end of the game though. Now let's take a look at the setup and what controllers the game supports. I played this game in a seated position just under 2 metres away from the camera. The head tracking was perfect and the game did not make me motion sick. I highly doubt people will feel motion sick due to the game using a teleportation system. This game can be played with a DualShock controller, one move controller or two move controllers. I did actually find playing with a DualShock controller to be the easiest control scheme. It's certainly more immersive playing with one move controller, as it does feel more like you're holding a staff, but it was actually a bit harder to line up the tiles that can be grabbed and moved. When playing with two move controllers, the player has the staff and a sort of club. The club doesn't do anything though, other than showing off some nice rope physics. Now let's take a look at the length of the game, and what trophies come with it. It took me around 3 hours to beat the game. I wasn't able to find all the artefacts though in that time. In total there are 13 trophies that can be achieved. There is 9 bronze, 3 silver and 1 gold. Nearly all of them will be unlocked naturally when playing through the game, as most are awarded after beating a level or world. The more time consuming ones are for finding all the artefacts hidden in the levels. Overall it's a simple trophy list which does cover everything the game has to offer. And now it's time for the verdict. Rangi first appeared on mobile VR, but don't let that put you off. 
as this is a very good puzzle game and it has been ported over very well. Graphically, you won't be able to tell that this game first appeared on mobile VR. The difficulty increase in for puzzles is some of the best I've experienced in recent memory, but just over the halfway point, I would have liked a few checkpoints during for longer levels, as having to redo all the puzzles in that level again just to get back to the area where an enemy killed you can be quite tedious. This type of puzzle game does work very well in VR, as it really demands you to inspect the environment you're in. It forces you to really scan each location, and doing so immerses you in the world so much more. Overall, this is a great puzzle game with a challenge that puzzle fans should really enjoy. We have seen a few mobile ports come to the PSVR now, but this game really does get it right. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more PlayStation VR content.